Hello, Daz here from Daz Locks. I'm going to start a series here on what I'm calling contractor grade padlocks. I was uh, shopping online for padlocks to buy with uh, repinnable cores and I saw that there was a bunch that were listed as contractor grade. Now I figured I'd do a little series on these so that I could show how good some of them are and how bad some of them are, the pros and cons of each. Um, most of these are the home security brand. These are all brought in by uh, Princess Auto up here in Canada. So let's start with this stainless one here. I'll just get these out of the way. Let's get these out of the way here. This first lock here is a, it's listed as a one and one eighths. And that is the distance between the inside of the shackle to the top of the lock body. This is a, let's see, about a 44 millimeter lock body with about an 8 millimeter shackle on it. On the back of the listing here, it shows a 5 16 304 stainless steel shackle. Uh, solid stainless steel construction for strength and a maximum pick resistant with a five pin cylinder. Um, these are brought in by home hardware. There's no real lock number on here but this is probably their internal part number for ordering for them. So let's see what it takes to get into this. Now I have tried, I'll bring these out here, I have tried this for tensioning at bottom of the keyway but all of these contractor locks take so much force um, you have to really tension them just to get any type of uh, binding on these things so what I have done and that that's even with top of the keyway with the small end here pushing as hard as I can uh, usually when I get to moving a pin this thing just kind of pops right out so I've I've been working on making my own tension tool not for just these locks but for other locks as well what I have here is basically a wire but this is a three millimeter stainless steel wire for strength uh, it's it's listed under hobby crafts so this one here I've kind of shaped the angles of these so that they're at about a 45 degree angle from here most of the tension wires that I've seen they're either at 90 degrees or they're at 0 or 180 whichever you want to call it and I've also one of the reasons on video number 10 I bought those Daniu if that's how you say it those Daniu hook hook set because they were a thicker 32 thousandths that was another thing I found because these needed such a high tension and such a strong uh, picking I was bending my sparrows uh, standard hook you can see there's a bit of a bend it was actually more I've bent it back but it was bending my my nice hooks here on a cheap lock this is a ten dollar lock 9.99 plus tax so let's see what it takes to pick into this here so I'm going to be putting really heavy tension and you can see how this sits nice and it's out of the way gives me room to pick I'll be picking off this this left warding here so let's give it some tension here nothing on one two has binding oh there's a nice click three nothing on three go to four four is binding a little bit of a click on four go to five nothing on five go back to one one is binding now and there's lots of room in this key oh there we go so that is their maximum pick resistant lock from home hardware let's reset this I just want to show you couple other things here lock it back up okay she's locked a couple things that I found 
from a raking point of view, this is a double peak rake. See how easy that opens? Now my concern with these contractor locks is that job sites are more susceptible for the bad guys to come after your stuff. Here is the city rake. Let's get that in there. Ooh, that wasn't very long at all. So that's the city rake. Let's just close that back up. It's even hard to close it back up. I should, I'll, I'll, I'll show you the keys after. Um, this lock is pretty bad. This is a, this is a little tool that I made for getting in the backs of locks. But if you just rock it up and down with a flat piece of metal, you're in. My concern with these um, is when a contractor goes in and sees them, he's probably going to grab something that says contractor grade, maximum pick resistance, you're safe, and all that kind of stuff. So this one, the key, actually, the key works fine, just to show you, just to prove it, that kind of stuff. So let's uh, let's have a look at the insides of this thing, and let's see what's going on in here. Let's get this stuff out of the way. You can see how easily that opens with uh, with just a flat bar. Now this one, one good thing is that these are. Oh, come on. These do have the ball bearings. I guess I should get the key out. Come on, let go. There we go. There's the screw. Now, how did I get this out last time here? Oh yeah, this one came out easy. There was one that I had to really just pry out of there. The spring on the actuator is so strong on this thing. Even this is of a bypassable design, which is this way, because you, you can see the full keyway. You can get a bypass tool on here from inside like this. And technically you could bypass this and turn the actuator. The spring on this is so strong that that is not possible. This actually does get to the back. It's just not strong enough to turn it. And I'm not breaking that little tool for a little cheesy little lock here. Okay, let's uh, get my little clip remover here. What I do is I move the bottom of the clip to sit in there and then I just push the top over and she just comes out very nice like that. Now I need the key and a follower. This one here, I move the key to about 90. Um, no, I have to go the other way. Just so I don't drop the driver pins up top there. Okay, here, come on. Uh, a little bit stiff. Okay, there are five pins here on a six pin core, but let's get them out here and we'll see what we have. So one is a standard. Two is a standard, three is a standard, four is a standard. These are all standards, by the way. Now I'll get my pinning tweezers here. I can't seem to see them here. I had a table full of stuff. Or I, anyway, I'll just dump them out here for now. One is a standard. Two is a standard driver, which looks like a key pin. Of 
course 3 is a standard Four is a standard. Oop. And five, of course, is a standard. But that's this is the main reason why I bought this particular lock, so that I could repin them, possibly with security pins. So these are very short key pins you can see how tiny they are I'll just kind of line them up for you and try to get a close-up here come on okay probably not focusing as well as I do I'm working on getting a better camera anyway they're all standard pins uh, the driver pins are very short there is quite a bit of room in here I could probably put some spools spool pins in here or uh, serrated pins which I am going to do to see if if I can make these locks a lot better and more secure anyway this is the first video in my series thanks for watching